Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> All right, welcome. I am Ryan McChesney, and this is the Ryan McChesney Show. Like me on Facebook and in real life, and it is the NFL Divisional Playoff Week. I am a wreck. I just need the game to get here. I'm going to be doing my picks for the week. Um, for, uh, to see, you know, to let you know who I think is going to move on and who I think is going to rip my soul out. Uh, so, um, but first, I, uh, I need to thank my sponsors. I, alright, uh, yeah, no, this is going to be, this is probably the best week in all of football. The best games usually happen this week and next week. It's great, it's a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, a lot of very tense games. This is it, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you my predictions, and along with that, later on, I'm gonna give you my top five moments of the season for my beloved Kansas City Chiefs. Top five moments of the season, in my opinion, of for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so let's get on with the picks. Uh, so apparently New England gets a bye. Seattle? At Atlanta. Now it's gonna be a really good game, but I feel like I feel like that uh, the Chiefs and Atlanta ha have like the same things in common. You know, they haven't really proved a whole lot in recent years in the playoffs. So yeah, Seattle's gonna come in. Seattle's gonna win that game. Count on it. Uh, New England. Um, bye. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are coming to Arrowhead. Now Arrowhead people, my people, our people. I need you to be loud. I need you to be proud. I need you to come out and and just, just don't don't let up. All right. Don't give the Steelers any opportunity to hear each other. Um, it's going to be a really good game. This is a terrible, terrible matchup for the Chiefs. Terrible, terrible matchup. And uh, I look, my heart says that I want the Chiefs to win. Uh, please, Chiefs, win. Please, please win. Um, but my head says that the Steelers are going to come in and they're going to beat the Chiefs. And I even have a score for that. It's going to be 31 to 27. Mark it down. Uh, Steelers are going to win. And the, one of the reasons I, I feel like that is because I feel like that the Chiefs defense isn't as good as people think it is. And the Chiefs' offense isn't as bad as people think it is. Uh, because uh, you hear national pundits who haven't watched anything except for highlights of the Chiefs. They, they, their, their reason that the Chiefs aren't going to win in the playoffs is, Well, Alex Smith, you know, he doesn't throw the ball down the field and they're way too conservative. That is not going to be the case this week. They're not going to be conservative. And if the Chiefs do lose, it's not going to be because of Alex Smith. It's going to be because their defense allowed 500 yards in offense to the Steelers, okay? Um, two, like 200 to Roethlisberger, or 300 to Roethlisberger, and 200 to Le'Veon Bell. It's, uh, so, um, if the Chiefs can contain them, they, they have a chance, but I don't see that happening. Um, I just, I feel like the Chiefs have been kind of playing with fire all year long, and I, you know, it's the Chiefs at Arrowhead. The last time... The last time the Chiefs won a playoff game at Arrowhead. They've lost their last four at Arrowhead, which is another reason I don't have the Chiefs winning. They just, they're jinxed. They're, they haven't won since they had AstroTurf on the ground there. Uh, but the last game that they did win at Arrowhead, they beat the Steelers with Joe Montana. And we're going to take a look at this clip here. All right, Montana has visited the sideline. Not a more important play has been performed by the Chiefs than what is coming up right now. And if you go back and look at that game, the calmest person in Arrowhead Stadium is so clearly Joe Montana. Montana surveys the defense. Montana's got a receiver in motion. Back to pass, Montana. Cocks his arm. Looks right, no one there. Looks left, throws in the end zone. Touchdown! He's done it! Joe Montana has done it again! Hollywood name has just placed a line drive pass into the 
teeth of the Pittsburgh defense. If you didn't believe before, you believe now. Does he work beautifully in the pocket? How often, when you need it on fourth down, does it come through? Does it happen just like you would draw it up in a movie? And this was one of those times. It'll be a 32-yard attempt. Ball put down, the kick is up. End over end. It is. Hey! <laughs> the Chiefs are going to Houston. What a game. I can't believe it. You said they brought him in to get them through the playoffs. He's taken one big step. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their snapshots in their mind of time at Arrowhead Stadium. I remember seeing that ball spinning in the air as if it was yesterday. Those are the moments that built what has now become this arrowhead behemoth of noise, this wall of emotion. It was what this stadium was made for, for big games and big time noise. To feel that electricity that goes through you is just, it's, it's indescribable. Ice in the veins, man, and and that guy hits the nail on the head, and uh, I, he's never, <laughs> he is really correct. If you look at that video, Joe, Joe looks cool, under pressure, Schottenheimer, Marty Schottenheimer looks like he's about to wet his pants, which we would later find out that in uh, later playoff appearances, that's exactly what he would do. He would go away from his game plan. He would completely wet his pants, panic under pressure, and lose games in heartbreaking fashion because he went away from his game plan. Uh, but he just looks so panicked there. And Joe's like, I got this. I got this. I'm cool. And Joe was, man. That's the last time that we won a playoff game at Arrowhead. The Chiefs did. And it was because we had Joe Montana as our team, on our team. Um, and uh, I think Alex Smith is is good. I think this is the best Chiefs team we've had in the playoffs since those late '60s teams. Okay, they're they're the most well-rounded team that we've had uh, here in KC for a long, long, long time. So I do think that if it, that they 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 have a good team, it's going to be a really good game. But I think the Steelers are going to come in to win. We're called to protect our heart. Okay. It's good to protect your heart. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I don't want to give up hope because I did that for eight years or for eight times. And every time the Chiefs in the playoffs, every time I'd get my hopes up, they'd rip it out and hand it to me. And I'd be like, well, there's always next year. You know, Gerback's going to be really good next year. Um, I know a few people who are going to like this pick. I'm picking, and it's going to be a really good game as well. I'm going to pick the Green Bay Packers over the Dallas Cowboys because the Dallas Cowboys, uh, they, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they overachieved all year, and they're playing Aaron, I am awesome, uh, stand in the pocket, uh, do a lot of dancing in the pocket for 10 seconds, Rodgers. They're playing Aaron freaking Rodgers. The guy is amazing. The guy is a magician there at quarterback. The guy, uh, he, I mean, it's like watching uh, Mozart conduct a symphony, man. It's Aaron freaking Rodgers. He's going to, he's going to go, he's going to carve up that Dallas defense. Rodgers is going to be, um, you know, if there's one guy that could take his team on his back in this whole playoffs, it's Aaron Rodgers. Um, and he's he's that good. He can beat the team. He's gonna beat the Cowboys by himself. It's gonna be Aaron Rodgers 31, Cowboys 24. Uh, I look. I, I think that it's just gonna be such a um, a new experience for Dak and Ezekiel Elliott. They don't really. I, I feel like they've overachieved all year. I mean, the two rookies, the two rookies are leading their team in, in, I mean, they're they're really good. If you've seen them play, they're actually really, really good. Uh, so I'm not really going to discount them as flukes, but they're kind of fluky. Uh, they, I, I, I don't, I can't pick against Rodgers. I'm never going to pick against Rodgers. He's my boyfriend. No. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. You know, if I pick the Chiefs and they don't win, it's going to hurt. Um, so, yeah, that being said, now it's time for my top five moments of the Chiefs season so far. All right, number five, we have <clears throat> Hungry Pick Passing. Dontari Poe passes the Denver Broncos out of the playoffs. Oh, this was amazing. Here it is. Here comes yep. Don Terry Poe in. 
Well, he's no stranger to the end zone. Crowd loves this. The biggest man to score a touchdown in a long time. And uh oh. Right. There we go. It, it was a run because they, they flipped it to him on a lateral. They got a He's going to take it. Look at this. He's going to throw. Touchdown. Oh, my. Oh, look at the players. Hoda Harris. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it horse face, eat it horse face. Take that LA. Take that. Now Tari's a better quarterback than the Broncos have on, on the roster this year. <laughs> Woo! Sitting at home. Sitting at home, aren't you, LA? Huh? How does it feel? Jerk. Number four. Woo! We're gonna go with Marcus Peters taking the ball away from the Panthers, taking the victory away from the Panthers, and then auditioning for the punt squad. Here it is. They need 44 yards to get within Gano's range. They get some of it there, Calvin Benjamin. But remember, no timeouts. Oh, he lost the football! Marcus Peters has it! What a turn of events here in Charlotte. Marcus Peters comes away with it, and they are in field goal range. That's exactly what he did. He just pulled it out of the grasp of Benjamin. Unbelievable play. Unbelievable. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's what Peters does, and, and the thing is, is that Peters has, he's, he's, <laughs> You see him, I've seen him recently try to do that and it hasn't worked and he just looks like such a sissy trying to like <laughs> and when it doesn't work. When it works, it looks great and it wins games. And Peters is awesome. He's a ball hawk. He's going to be one of the reasons if the Chiefs win. He's going to be one of the reasons when the Chiefs, if the Chiefs beat the Steelers. Because uh, he's going to be a ball hawk. Roethlisberger, watch out. Um, number three, we're going to have Santos. Kyrie Santos banking in that whole freaking game from Denver's number three in Denver. Uh, Monday or Sunday night football in Denver. The Chiefs, the drive, the um, the the touchdown call that was delayed, the uh, the bank in field goal. Here it is. 34 yard attempt. And Justin Houston really earned his money that night. He got uh, what three sacks in the first quarter? Like completely shut the doll, shut the Broncos out all by himself. Why, why, that, why was I about to say Dolphins? Because they, they yeah, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's number three. Number two, it's gonna be the comeback in San Diego. Alex Smith in overtime. He took the team on his back, and it set the tone in week one. Set the tone for the rest of the season. Take it away, baby. Smith. Smith slices in. Touchdown, Kansas City wins it. What a comeback. What a game. All right, and the number one moment from the Chiefs season is the Eric Berry pick two from Atlanta. Matty Ice, Matty Melted. Here it is. Devin Coleman is the running back. Now Ryan will throw. It's intercepted. This can be returned for two. This can be points for Kansas City. It would get Kansas City the lead. It's Eric Berry. 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. It is a two conversion the other way for Kansas City the first time in Chiefs history the Chiefs had pulled it off and the Chiefs lead 29-28 Eric Berry who went through cancer 
treatments not far from here at Emory University. Just picked off the Matt Ryan pass. There are so many moments, oh man, there are so many reasons that make this moment great. One, it's Eric Berry coming back to his hometown in Atlanta, okay, where he uh, he underwent chemotherapy just two years ago. Come back, and he scored eight points that game, okay? He scored eight points that game. He had a pick six and a pick two, okay? He had the game of his life in the town which he grew up in. It was amazing, and the guy is an amazing story. Came back from cancer. He's just such a, probably the best story on the whole Chiefs roster. Uh, one of the most inspirational stories you will ever hear. He came back uh, from Hodgkin's lymphoma, and he's having, he's playing better than he's ever played. The Chiefs have better signed him. <laughs> All right, that's my show for this week. I am Ryan McChesney. Like me on Facebook and in real life. I will be doing a show next week. Uh, it'll be a, a show, a celebratory show, or a therapy session. I don't know. It depends on what happens Sunday at noon. All right, go Chiefs. <laughs>